Hey guys, welcome back to another book review video, and today we're going to be taking a look at Rally Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Adventure, the second book in Rally Jefferson's uh, series of Diary of a Wimpy Kid books. So yeah, here it is. We've got it here. Uh, this book is written by Jeff Kinney. The interesting thing about this book is that we were actually supposed to get this book back in April 7th of 2020. Uh, but, of course, because of recent events, um, this book actually got delayed uh, to August 4th, 2020. So, uh, yeah, we had to wait an extra four months for this book to be released. Uh, just thought I'd point that out because uh, it was definitely an interesting development uh, with the release of this book. But, uh, yeah, so here we have the cover. I've got the title there. And then here on the cover, we've got Rowley riding a giant seahorse um, in his own art style, dressed like a Viking uh, with armor and stuff. Uh, yeah, really interesting. Down here, we've got Greg. It says that this book was written with help from Greg Heffley, so he's there too. Of course, you can't have a story about Rowley without Greg, I guess. It's got this nice orange cover. Uh, it's got blue for some water down here. Um, really, in, really nice matte feel for the book. Uh, and then the title and the characters are embossed uh, and feels uh, kind of glossy. So, yeah, really nice. Um, here on the spine, you know, we got the title. Got Kenny's last name, Amulet Books logo. And then here we have a picture of Rowley's face. So there it is. And uh, speaking of the spine here, uh, I ordered this book off of Amazon, and this is the condition they sent it to me. So uh, yeah, it may have actually ended up like that in transit. Uh, maybe the mail carriers weren't really handling the package all that carefully. Uh, but you know, who knows? Uh, I just kind of disappointed that the spine got messed up a little bit, but, you know, as long as I could read the book, I guess that's okay. Alright, so here on the back it says, Adventure awaits. From the imagination of Raleigh Jefferson comes an adventure of epic proportions. Join Roland and his best friend Garg, the Barbarian, as they leave the safety of their village and embark on a quest to save Roland's mom from the White Warlock. Will our heroes survive? Find out in Raleigh Jefferson's awesome, friendly adventure. And we got <laughs> Roland and Garg here. Uh, surrounded by arrows and axes and tridents and hands. Uh, looking quite scared, so uh, yeah. And then down here, um, it says, Looking for a totally different type of adventure? Then check out Diary of an Awesome Friendly Kid, Rally Jefferson's side-splitting story featuring his best friend, Greg Heffley. And we got a picture of the first book there. Some information about Amulet Books, wimpykid.com, the at wimpykid tag, and then the price uh, information. So, uh, yeah. Um, I actually got this book for $9 on Amazon. Uh, that was the price for pre-ordering. Uh, so I don't know if it's still that price. It probably still is. But, yeah, 9 bucks for this book. Not bad. Uh, definitely happy with that price point. Uh, now, about the cover, before I go into the innards of the book, I just got to say that Jeff must be a really good graphic designer because... Uh, this book is definitely very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, it's just really nice to hold. Uh, feels nice. And it's just really well designed. I gotta say, you know, kudos to Jeff. Uh, he really works hard uh, making his books look good. And then when you open it up here, um, kind of like with the first book, how this uh, first the first few colored pages uh, had Rowley's face on them. This one instead has a map uh, for, you know, the setting of Rowley's story here uh, with a compass with his face and then uh, I thought it was going to be the same on the back but it's actually different it's got arrows and axes and swords just a multitude of weapons uh, so yeah really interesting and just kind of a nice little added detail uh, that I really like so yeah that's actually really cool so going into the book so you can see first page here we've got a tree with uh, some mushrooms and stuff so yeah that's the first page and then you get into the next few pages 
Uh, it tells you about Diary of an Awesome Friendly Kid and all of the other Diary of a Wimpy Kid books. And then on the next page has the title once again, and it's got Rowley this time riding a giant narwhal. Pretty interesting picture there. Uh, Jeff Kinney's name once again, and then Amulet Books, the publisher. So yeah, next couple of page, some publishing information, or as Rowley puts it, a bunch of boring stuff that they made him put in the book. And then here we've got two pictures. We've got Rowley, and we've got Roland. So just giving each other a thumbs up. Nice. And from there, you go straight into the book, and you can start reading it. But from here, we are actually going to skip ahead to my favorite page, which is on page 31. Uh, this is my favorite part of the book. I just really like this little jab. So, when discussing the book that Rowley is writing, uh, Greg uh, gives Rowley a couple of pointers throughout the book. And there's this one part where Rowley suggests that maybe his character could be a wizard, with a wand that casts spells, but then Greg says that he needs to come up with something better because no one would read a book about a boy wizard uh, clearly uh, shooting uh, shots at J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series, and I just thought that was kind of funny. But let's just go ahead and look through the book. I'll just kind of uh, get it to focus first, and then just kind of skim through the pages there so you can see. It's funny because uh, the actual storybook itself uh, doesn't have lines, but then when it cuts to Greg and Rowley talking about the book that's being written, uh, it has the lines as if they're writing in a journal. So, yeah, I thought that was a pretty interesting detail. But, yeah, that's basically it for all the, you know, aesthetic stuff about this book. But let's go ahead and talk about this book. So, my thoughts about this book... Uh, first, I want to say that this series is definitely not Diary of a Wimpy Kid, um, and it's not supposed to be. Uh, this series is definitely more childish due to uh, the character of Rowley and his overall mindset and his characterization. He is definitely more childish than Greg. So this book uh, and this series uh, just is written more for children, I th I'd say. Uh, you know, no surprise there. This is a children's book. But, uh, you know, you go back and read the first Wimpy Kid book, and that book still really makes me laugh out loud. You know, that one definitely had um, some jokes for older audiences so they could enjoy the read. But this one is definitely m more so for kids, uh, so that's a little disappointing. And it seems like the main function of this series is actually just to fund the main line of Wimpy Kid books. Uh, you know, these ones are written first, and then, you know, we get the main, the next wimpy kid story uh, later on in the year. Uh, at least that's how it's been for the past uh, two years. In fact, in two months, we're going to get book 15 of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. So it really seems like this series uh, really is more for, um, you know, funding uh, the making of other books. And if that's the case, I definitely want to support the main Diary of a Wimpy Kid series. So, you know, just having this to hold me over until the next Diary of a Wimpy Kid book comes out uh, is actually really nice. Uh, so, yeah. Um, overall, the plot of this book is uh, kind of ridiculous, but that's kind of the point. You know, it's a fantasy adventure book written uh, from Rowley. <laughs> so, uh, things get pretty pretty crazy. Um, you know, we get a crossover from a multitude of other literary characters, uh, which actually makes it pretty fun, but also makes it pretty weird. But you know what? I'm okay with it. I'm I'm totally okay with uh, weird stories. Uh, if you've read the first book, you definitely know uh, the way Rowley writes. And so knowing that, him writing his own story, uh, you pretty much know how it's going to go. So that being said, in the first book, the first book actually got a lot of flack because Greg was portrayed as actually being really jerky to Rowley. Um, I thought that was actually a really interesting dynamic, and it really showed things from Rowley's perspective, and I thought it was really interesting. Um, in this book, Greg isn't as jerky to Rowley as he is in the first book, but he still is pretty jerky, you know, he's still Greg, and we all know Greg and Rowley's relationship at this point, so their dynamic is always entertaining, uh, but even as toxic as it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, still really interesting to read. Uh, probably the most interesting part about this book is Greg and Rowley's interactions. Uh, I actually enjoyed those more than I enjoyed um, 
reading about Rowley's uh, little storybook that he writes. Just the adventure part didn't really uh, interest me as much as Greg and Rowley's interactions, but it definitely led to a satisfying ending. You know, it was still a really uh, interesting read just to kind of read a book that Rowley has written and see how he and Greg, uh, just, just their creative process in writing it. So it makes for a really interesting read. This book is definitely different from the first book, which I definitely appreciated. In fact, this book is actually reminding me of the spinoff books from the uh, Captain Underpants series written by Dave Pilkey. You know, stuff like Ook and Gluck, Super Diaper Baby, and the Dogman series. Uh, the way they're kind of written uh, as if George and Harold had written them and published them. That's kind of what Jeff is kind of trying to do with this book, which I thought was really interesting. And, uh, you know, it's not in a journal format like the first book was, but this one is more so uh, definitely a spinoff um, based off of Rally's, you know, creative interests and stuff. So that was a pretty interesting uh, change uh, from the first book, which I really appreciated. And this book also pokes fun at the movie industry's methods of adapting books to movies, which I also thought was really fun. Uh, there was a lot of jokes about merchandising and franchises and, you know, the creative liberties that movie studios take when altering stories for the big screen and, uh, you know, just poking fun at fandoms in general. Uh, I definitely think that Jeff is trying to, uh, you know, vent his frustrations with, like, the movie industry um, with this book and, you know, just creative writing in general and being an author uh, which I thought was actually really clever and really fun. Um, you'll see what I mean when you read the book, but yeah, it, that was actually really fun. Uh, a lot of really interesting jokes came from that. And I guess Jeff overall is warning uh, Disney, you know, not to screw up with their plans to adapt the Wimpy Kid franchise uh, since they bought the film rights uh, from Fox after buying 20th Century Fox. So, you know, Disney, you better watch out. <laughs> Jeff is warning you guys, you know, don't screw up. Uh, when adapting this book. So yeah, that was also uh, pretty fun and pretty interesting. Another thing that I really wanted to point out about this book is that this first printing uh, might have had some issues um, because I don't want to spoil anything here, but uh, let me go to the first couple of pages. So it's nice and dark, the print, uh, the ink is actually, you know, looking normal, looking good. But uh, you get towards the end of the book here, and let me try and find a good example that doesn't really spoil anything. Uh, sh let's see. There was a couple of pages that uh, the printing started to get lighter, almost gray. Uh, so that might be an issue with this first run of books here. Um, you can't really tell here, but uh, it is definitely a lot lighter uh, than some of the other parts. Uh, so, you know, that is definitely an issue that I think some of these uh, first few books have. Uh, so hopefully uh, Jeff realizes that real quick and fixes that with the second printing uh, because, you know, it didn't bother me too much, but it's an error is an error and, you know, you gotta, you gotta fix it somehow. So just wanted to point that out to Jeff uh, if he even watches this video. Uh, but yeah, um, in the future, I definitely like to see more from this series. I actually am surprised that, you know, Jeff hasn't written, like, a book surrounding, like, Zooey Mama. That's definitely something I'd like to see uh, in the future. I know in the first book they added a few extra Zooey Mama comics in one chapter of the book, uh, but here there wasn't any mention of Zooey Mama, which I was pretty surprised about, and in the future maybe there would be a whole book of just Rally Zooey Mama comics. I think that would be really interesting. Uh, don't know how it would fit into this series, but, you know, if Jeff decides to do that in the future, I think that'd be really cool, and I'd definitely give that a read. One prediction I'd have about this book series is that this series, I've noticed, might be colored after the rainbow. Uh, the first book was, of course, red, and then the second book here is orange, so if they're following the colors of the rainbow, the next book should be yellow, so we'll see uh, if that's the case. So, if that is the case, it would be kind of cool, but if it isn't, I feel like that would be kind of a missed opportunity, because then that would really set, you know, Rowley's series apart from Greg's, uh, because Greg, he just gets a different colored journal, uh, just willy-nilly, there's no uh, real pattern to it, but if this series 
uh, just kind of like keeps it in like a rainbow color. I think that would be really cool once we get like the full seven colors, uh, you know, uh, just kind of making out the rainbow. Uh, I think that would be <laughs> pretty funny actually, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, just I predict that the next book color will be yellow and we'll see if that's the case. Um, but yeah, overall, I don't think this book is as good as the first book in the series. And it's definitely not the best book in the Wimpy Kid series, but it's definitely not the worst. I think this is just a fun little read, just to kind of hold us over until the next Wimpy Kid book. And I'm okay with that. So that being said, I definitely recommend this book to Wimpy Kid fans and younger readers, specifically those from elementary to middle school grades. Uh, but older fans of the series may not be as invent invested in the story. Um, I'm just going to be honest, guys. I wasn't too invested in this story. There was only certain parts of this story that I really liked. But overall, I think this book is fine. You know, it's not the worst book I've ever read. Uh, it just had some trouble uh, keeping me invested 100% all the way through the story. But, yeah. With that being said, I encourage everyone to check this book out for themselves. You know, give it a read and, you know, share your opinions. Uh, form your own opinion about it. So pick it up as soon as you can and give it a read. Before I go here, just out of fun, I want to compare the covers here. So here's the first book, and here is the sequel. As you can see, they actually uh, match up pretty good here. Um, here's the spines. Spines match up. Like I said, Jeff Kinney is, must be an expert graphic designer because his books are very aesthetically pleasing. And they always match up really nice. So, yeah, there it is with the first book. And then, just for no reason other than the fact that they're both orange, here it is compared to uh, The Long Haul. Um, this book is just as long as, you know, your standard Diary of a Wimpy Kid book, about 217 pages. Um, just like the other books in the series. So, yeah, there's that. Really cool. And... Yeah, that's basically it. So if you guys have read this book, let me know what your guys' thoughts were of it. Uh, if you haven't read this book, let me know if you're interested in picking it up. And once you eventually read it, um, let me know your thoughts. You know, try not to spoil anything right now. You know, the book is still relatively new. Uh, give people some time to read it or say spoiler alert. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. I try not to spoil this book too much. This is a spoiler-free review. I just wanted to give some of my thoughts that I had while reading it. And, uh... Yeah, that's basically it. If you guys made it this far, this is actually a really long video. This is probably my longest Wimpy Kid book review. Uh, oof, I tried not to make it that long, but I just had so many thoughts about it. Uh, so yeah, if you made it this far, thank you guys so much for watching the video. And I'll see you guys in the next Wimpy Kid book review video. Later.